What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Austin Venom Cupcake Franchise on Madden 2009. We're 3-1. We won the first quarter of the season. We are on our way to achieving our goals this year of becoming a playoff team and getting 8 victories. Our next game will be against the Pittsburgh Steelers. However, one player might not be active. Lloyd Spivey is questionable with a bruised shoulder. And in this game, you are able to do some injury rehab. And actually, when I click this, it says he's doubtful. So I don't know. Maybe they just don't have doubtful listed here. And questionable gets kind of uh, lumped in with uh, doubtful. Or maybe not. Doubtful does exist. So I don't know what it is. Anyway, if you wanted to, you can rehab an injury here with the bench press, which is something I am not good at at all. And I don't want to risk aggravating the injury. I think if we do the one at a conservative pace here, it won't be too bad. I just kind of want to see what this is like. Because I have never done this before. So, how many do I need to actually get? I don't need the instructions because I'm only going to have like 8 anyway, probably. I don't know why they made these so difficult. So we have that injury bar that I can't really focus on right now. I'm trying to put up these reps at 225. That's 9. I think Spivey could do like 20 if he were fully healthy and had somebody who knew what they were doing here with the controller. That was 10 reps though. That's respectable. What does that do? The medical staff believes your aggressive pace is the reason you injured yourself out there today. Spivey has re-injured himself setting his injury back even further. I didn't know that could happen if I went with the conservative route. So his old status was doubtful. His new status is out one week. So there's really no change there. So I kind of got away with experimenting there. He was probably not going to play this game anyway. There's also a chance to get Jeff Hangartner back and he doesn't normally play. I kind of want to do this one too. All right, this is going to be the 40 yard dash. This one is also very difficult. I'm still not even sure the right way to do these. This is not going well. Oh, 5.9. So that's probably going to set him back for a while, huh? Handgartner was not able to perform at a level sufficient to impress the medical staff. So he just stays probable. That is a really cool feature. A really cool idea for rehabbing. Oh, I could do it again? Okay. They don't let you do it a second time. Not that I would. But now I've gotten a chance to play with that feature. I had to at least test it out. And thankfully, nothing major is going to happen as a result. However... It looks like Nick Blair is going to get a chance to play some running back today as a starter. Cameron Brady is also going to play a lot as well. And considering the circumstances in this game, missing Lloyd Spivey, I think I'll play this game instead of simulate. Even without Lloyd Spivey, it doesn't matter who's at running back with the way our defense has played this season. I wonder if they can keep it up. Four games in, they have not had a bad game yet. They have not allowed 20 points in a game themselves without like safeties or defensive scoring or pick sixes helping them out. The other team. So here we are back at home to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's get underway. We have never played Pittsburgh before. Andrews out of the end zone, looks to get outside, and he is taken down at the 27. Ben Roethlisberger is hurt. I don't think he is going to be playing. So, Xavier Lester at quarterback, facing our defense. That might be tough. Lester has played a lot this season. Five touchdowns, four interceptions. He does not have great speed. His awareness is only a 64. And how about the throwing ratings? Not bad. But we'll see how he handles this defense that has given every quarterback we've faced this year a big problem. 
Rashard Mendenhall, Najee Davenport. At receiver, it's Antonio Holmes, Limus Swede, and Carl Nystrom. Looks like Ben is not coming back anytime soon, and they're also potentially missing James Harrison and Heath Miller today. So injury is affecting this Steelers team quite a bit. That's how it is here in the NFL. Let's get underway now. Carolina looked atrocious against us. There were two ugly interceptions, both caught by Scott Starks. We'll see how Lester handles this opportunity as Rashard Mendenhall runs inside and picks up six. Limus Swede wears number 18. He is matched up on the left side with Denard Sloan. I guess it's flipped here. Maybe I made a, a change when we faced Deshaun Jackson or something. Play fake and dumped off and incomplete. What a hit. Fake the inside and down goes Lester. It's Wayne Coffey. Coffey is waking up this defense. I took that from a comment in chat. But hey, we have a true game changer now in Wayne Coffey. We have not had a rookie defender do what he is doing. He might be rookie of the year. Oh boy. Returnable. Joiner up to the 44-yard line. So now, without Lloyd Spivey, how much adapting do we have to do? Is this more of a passing day for us? Is it still a day where we can run? Hard to say, but my passing in the last episode is really rough. We'll run it here on first and ten. Good so far. Nick Blair busts out for a gain of around 16 or something. I know a lot of our receivers are only averaging like two or three catches a game. We'll see if they get more opportunities in this one. And I don't want to take any chances here. Shout out here to Amos Irving, who was very close to stepping out of bounds and did not. Troy Polamalu. Okay, Casey Hampton. It says Harrison's playing. Blair, oh my! We got to avoid those. I cut that one inside. I thought that edge defender was going to catch him if I took it wide. But if I was patient there, the block was getting set up. Third down and two. That is caught. Troy Palomalu with good coverage, but it's still a first down. Spangler heads to the air, and there is a drop. Steelers thought it was a fumble. But it is a drop for Dexter. 3-4 defense here from the Pittsburgh Steelers. And we'll run this. Oh, a hurdle from Blair. And he almost broke this one. Blair has had that ability to break first contact that I've always liked. And that's a big reason why I don't want him to uh, go back to wide receiver. I think that his skill set is so good at running back. So third down and four. We head to the air. Not bad coverage from Pittsburgh. And Spangler is not going to get there himself. So do we go for it on fourth and one against the Steelers? I don't want to take the chance here. And I think that we're good enough to where we don't have to like go for it because it's one of our only chances to score. I think we'll be back. Let's take our three. Ever since we hired Ty Law as our head coach, our secondary has been transformed. Teams are having a lot of trouble throwing against us. Steelers trying to reverse that trend. Xavier Lester tosses out to Mendenhall, and he falls ahead for two. I think that awareness boost at cornerback is making a pretty big difference. That and Denard Sloan is just good. Plenty of time here. Lester is on target for a gain of six. Three receivers in the football game. Starks in the slot. Cole matched up with Holmes. 
It's a fake. And a throw across the middle that is picked off. Daryl Easley tackled at the Pittsburgh 35. What more is there to say about this defense? Just the hook zone there from Easley. Man to man across the board. And we're just lucky we had uh, the hook zone there. Never saw him. Coach Madden wants us to go for the shot here after the interception. Let's see if we can get a connection here. Play fake. Take the shot. To the end zone! Broken up for Dexter! Third down and seven. Pryor in the slot. And we're heading to the air. Uh-oh. A lot of pressure and they get to him. And that is going to drop us outside of field goal range. What is the backtrack saying here? Yeah, I don't know if I trust that. A lot of times there's quick reactions from uh, those underneath defenders. So, maybe. They're getting pretty close on some of these block attempts. Can you actually do it in this game? It feels possible. Alright, Pittsburgh takes over. They have not done great. We'll play out one more drive for each team and then get into some simulating. So far, so good for Austin. More great defense. Got three points on the board. Lester heads to the air again. Has to get it outside and connects with Limus Swede for a first down. Nystrom checks into the game. He is slot right. Xavier Lester first and ten. Heading to the air. Sliding and that is knocked down by Corin Shannon. Coffee was also there to apply some pressure. It's actually fun to watch the pass rushing now in this season. Short throw and breaking away. Here's Humphrey for a first down after Starks missed the tackle. Safety help over Santonio San Holmes. Pittsburgh, 22 personnel. Running this with Mendenhall, and nobody was able to block Daryl Easley. We've been so reliant on blitzing in this series, now it's not as necessary. I think we'll bring five on this one, though. And of course, now they bring over a second tight end. It's a run. I thought it was third and ten for some reason. I'm getting ahead of myself. Third and eight. 0 for 2 so far. Coffee? No, he needs the rush. Alright, it's a bit aggressive here, but I want to see how he reacts to it. Dumped off. Mendenhall's going to get it. We again miss the tackle. And Mendenhall picks up a big gain to the Austin 36. So early on, tackles, miss tackles, giving Pittsburgh a chance at moving the football. First quarter winding down for Pittsburgh and the shotgun. Here is Lester. We have that cover one hook called again. Inside and nowhere for Mendenhall. Stopped by Hardy. This is kind of a test play here. I don't mind third and ten cover two. But will he actually make the throw if it's open? That hole between the uh, outside corner and the safety. Well, if you have the perfect call dialed up there, I guess that works too. Lester completes it, and now Pittsburgh is on the fringe of the red zone. Don't call cover two very often, just don't have many scenarios where I really like it. It's especially bad in these games that are before EA added the, um, the coverage uh, technique modifiers into, I forget which Madden it was, first. Pretty big drive, though, for Pittsburgh. I mean, we haven't seen teams drive on our defense very often, so once you're here, you got to find a way to get six. And here is Lester, dumped off. Mendenhall breaks a tackle. we got to fix that. Oh, that's a big penalty. Pittsburgh getting ready for some power running, and they'll back up five. I think one thing we have to start looking at, though, is when I can... Like, try to call some plays that might take away those checkdowns, because yards after catch has been a big problem 
We've seen it from, I think, both Humphrey and Mendenhall. So, that is knocked down! I want to check out their ratings quick in terms of break tackle. Because that could just be a strategy that we have to uh, run with today. So, Mendenhall, 94 speed, 82 strength at 225 pounds. And then tight end Tory Humphrey had a good catch and run earlier. 70 strength, 54 trucking. That was uh, a tight end versus a slot corner, though, so that is a mismatch. So we want to take away checkdowns today. That's part of our plan going forward. Sometimes I try to funnel passes underneath, but it's not working right now. Give to Mendenhall. And he doesn't go too far. Maybe a three-yard gain. All right. Pretty soft defense here. We're not going to be blitzing. We're going to do what the Jets should have done against the Raiders. Third down and 12. Actually defending the end zone. It is a screen. And Holmes is taken down by Denard Sloan. Nice play. We weren't ready for a screen. But Sloan was. All tied here at three as Austin takes over. And we'll look to get the running game established. Amos Irving, the motion man. Good lead block. And we will follow him up the middle for a gain of seven. Running out of the eye. And here is Blair. He has the speed to bounce it wide. And he'll get a big pickup out toward midfield. 17 yards for Blair. That's what's nice about this backfield, is they have so much speed. Now, Pittsburgh looks ready for a throw. We're going to audible out of this. Didn't like the toss there anymore. Taking a shot. Way down the middle. It is overthrown for Joyner. I'd like to see this more from the deep passing game in newer Madden. I want to see the ball overthrown a bit so that if your player has a speed advantage, he can maybe get to it. Keeps it out of harm's way. Heading to the air. Whoa! All right. That's the second time I believe they have sacked Spangler. Pittsburgh loves to bring pressure. And it's a nice overload here. They send four on the left side, and that math would not add up unless Blair wanted to uh, get over and block. I don't know why he reads the right side first, if that's just how they kind of programmed it, because it sure would be nice if he read left initially. Still not really having a good passing game this year. So, a third down and 18. Paul Williams is in the game. And I can't get the pass away to give him a shot. Down goes Spangler again. Pittsburgh playing tough defense, and so are we. Intercepted! Was that a touchdown? It was! A pick six! That is Scott Starks with another interception. This one goes for a touchdown. And then the Steelers just took the kick for a touchdown. And they made the extra point, so we're losing now. Okay then, that's a lot of action. 28k prior, and then Spangler is intercepted. Pittsburgh trying to extend the lead, but back-to-back -back drops will end their drive. We'll take over. Dump-offs to Blair, get us a first down. That's three catches on this drive. I know you're going to be happy with that, but we end up stalling. And it looks like we're going to half here, down by one. So, we got a little bit of action here in the simming. Still a very close game. Brady getting some carries here. One more sim drive here. 27 to Holmes, a penalty on the defense. 13 more. And the Steelers have found the end zone again. Nick Blair, bruised elbow. He will miss a quarter. So will Elijah Jackson. We are running out of running backs. We have Cameron Brady. And he wasn't all that effective last episode. So I think we've got to find a way to throw against this Pittsburgh defense that just continuously blitzes. 
Not here, at least. Rolling. Nowhere to go. A lot of pressure here on the passing game suddenly. Four receivers in the game. And open! Making the catch is Paul Williams! <sighs> he just gets it done. Even though we replaced him at slot receiver, maybe Paul Williams still deserves some opportunity. All right, Cameron Brady, what can you do? Falling ahead here, we get two yards. Unable to get outside is Brady. He lost those two yards. This is indeed coming down to our passing game. And I think with how blitz-heavy Pittsburgh is, I want to keep spreading out their defense. It's just tougher to blitz when you have defenders out of the box and you're sending all these secondary rushers so i kind of like maybe this four wide becoming our plan the rest of the day so we are switching up the offense in a big way in this one let's see if i can give williams a different route heading to the air this is complete now Cade Pryor turns up and he moves the chains austin successful again on third down won't shy away from the ground game entirely, and we don't need to. Cameron Brady, first down to the Pittsburgh 19. All right, got to convert this time in the red zone. A little play action here. Rolling right, throwing to the end zone, and it's broken up. I knew that was going to be a really difficult throw, and we almost got it. We got the separation. Here it is one more time. He's open. It needs to be on the Venom logo. And it's a little underthrown. I like this play a lot as well. Heading to the air. Oh my, they brought it again. They have gotten all over Spangler today with these blitzes. Again, issues on that left side. Probably have to have uh, some extra protection here against this team. We're going to see if we can get an open look vertically. We'll have Joiner on a little crossing pattern here as our check down. They don't blitz this time. And they didn't have to! It's a fumble! And Austin's going to keep the ball, but it won't even matter. We're dropped out of field goal range, and Pittsburgh has sacked Spangler again. These missed blocks. This is the worst part of Madden 09, is the pass block AI is atrocious. Hopefully pinning them deep here. That's a good block, but a good bounce will put Pittsburgh at their own 8-yard line. So they picked up a touchdown off of a kick return, and then they had a pretty good drive where we helped him out with a penalty. So let's see if we can settle down the scoring now and get us the ball back. Richard Mendenhall cut back, and a gain of six. On the ground again, Mendenhall fights ahead for three yards to set up third and short. I've become much more of an aggressive third down player over the years. Third down and one. Will it be Mendenhall a third straight time? Indeed it will, and he moves the chains. Hand off Mendenhall, and they have ran it with him every play on this drive. Five runs to start this drive. Third and five, you have to think pass here. With Pittsburgh up eight, they will throw it, and Humphrey won't get there. Big stop, fourth down. This is returnable. Uh-oh, trying to rip the ball out. Lucky it didn't work. Wow. Wow. No safeties for Pittsburgh. Now they are adjusting their defense as I make a change here. Just snap the ball. 
or call a timeout. It wouldn't even snap the ball there for some reason. Now I audible to a run. Cam Brady wrapped up three yards. Maybe try to get some good quick passes in now. Wide open, caught, Joiner breaks the tackle. That'll move the sticks. Three-man rush, and we get it to Blair. He's had a lot of catches in this game, most in the simulating. But that is where he might be at his best. I forgot Blair would be back. It's big to have him in for this fourth quarter. I think that offers a lot more balance. And we'll run it again. Blair, not bad. Gain of five. Trying to run to the outside, and Truman couldn't hold his block. It's a short pickup. Third down and three. We'll keep Blair in to protect and hope he guesses the right side. They don't bring pressure. We're going to take a shot here, and it's broken up. I didn't actually see Paul and Lalu there. I thought I might have a uh, single coverage on the outside. He got behind the corner, so I kind of liked it. But at least it's not a sack. We had to put two scores on the board anyway to take the lead. So that is the first one, making it 17 to 12. Pittsburgh takes over. Up five, hoping to run out some clock. I expect a lot more Richard Mendenhall. We get it on first down. Mendenhall wrapped up. Pierre Ellis. Looking for a three and out here. Mendenhall cuts to the right. Doesn't get far. It's third down. Third and nine. Will Pittsburgh actually throw it? They will. Short for Davis, and he won't get there. Pittsburgh playing it safe. Hoping their defense can complete the game. Four and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Again, there is pressure on Spangler as we extend the play and can't pull this off. Yeah, I don't think a run on second down makes a lot of sense here. Second down and 10. Got it away just in time. Are you kidding me? On a play like that, I'm not even checking the rush because I know that if the slant's open, I'm just going to throw it. Do they really almost get a sack on that? No long developing throws. That's why I want to still run a little bit. It's so risky to pass. Well, that's a loss of two. Is it possible that play action could slow them down a little bit? I don't really want a long developing play here. But, uh, wow, a forced fumble. Pressure through every single time. Like, how do we combat all these misses? He just runs by him. So now we're looking at possibly needing another stop. We spread out the defense. And we're going to give him a shot downfield. It is underthrown and incomplete. Dexter had a shot. Fourth down. Looks like Truman got open here. Might have been close to a first down. We had the two on one here. Underthrown. And right through his hands. Fisher already has a kick return touchdown and has a good run back. Pittsburgh at the 43. So we're looking at if we get a stop, they're probably going to pin us pretty deep. You would think. First and ten for the Steelers. 2.50 left to go. Hand off to Mendenhall. And a good power run of three. 
Whoa. They're going five wide suddenly? As they're trying to run clock. Five wide. It'd be a good time for some pass rush here off the right edge. Lester. He is tripped up and that will be a sack. I don't know what that even was. I think they were setting up a screen. So, how aggressive is the third and nine call? Two tight ends, two receivers. Can I flip this actually and put a hook zone over here? Mendenhall runs to the outside and he will get about four yards before he stopped. And Austin is set to get the football again. Returnable from the 10. And here we go. Across the 20. Cutting outside. Joiner across the 30 and up to the 35 yard line. We must now travel 65 yards in a minute 44. This is our final chance to win the ball game. A touchdown wins everybody. Let's get off to a good start here. Bringing pressure. And I don't think he was in bounds. Again to the air and on the outside. Hooking up with Pryor. Out of bounds, I thought. I guess we have to go hurry up. But that takes us to the Pittsburgh 48. Good pickup. We still have a timeout, by the way. Running this with Blair. Can't afford too many of those, but there's four yards. Play fake. And we can roll out right. I'm not throwing it. Nope. Spangler out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That was a massive block by our right tackle, McAllister, to put that defender on the ground. Make it so Spangler could roll out with ease. 61 seconds to go in the game as we roll right again and won't take a chance on first down. All right, we go four wide now, and that puts Paul Williams in the game, who has uh, better stamina at the moment than the other receivers who are getting tired. And we head to the air. Got of the way just in time for Pryor. Spangler took a major hit on that play. He is okay. And now third and one. I think here we call a run and then a timeout to get everybody rested up. So move the chains. Blair inside the 15. Now 34 seconds left. We have not been great today in the red zone. No touchdowns. That obviously has to change now. Looks like they're bracketing the receivers. First and 10. We'll get this out. Nice throw. No. I thought he'd catch that without losing his momentum. 23 seconds left. Wow, this is really uh, hurting here. 17 seconds to go. Rolling. Oh, man. 13 seconds to get 14 yards. We really can't even... Uh, be in bounds so I think we're looking at seven man protection here and hoping to get a good look into the end zone here we go everybody game on the line going to the back corner it is almost picked off and now it's fourth down intended for Joiner. The game is now on the line. This is it, everybody. It all comes down to this play. Blair, Williams, and Joyner line up on the right side. And this is for the win. The Austin Venom trying to move to 4-1. and one. To the air! Back in the end zone! Touchdown, Nick Blair! There it is! The go-ahead score with four seconds left! Blair gets behind the linebackers, 
And John Spangler has thrown what looks to be a game-winning touchdown. How about that? If it wasn't open, I wanted Paul Williams on the corner. And that probably wasn't going to be open. The safety starts to slide over when the pass is thrown. So this first linebacker here, I mean, he's got him all the way to the two-yard line. But there's no one in the deep middle. All you got to do is get it over the linebacker here, and that's what you're worried about. I wasn't sure if we could. But he got enough air under it. There's the touchdown. Austin gets it done. All right, we have a two-point play here. 18 to 17. A little play fake and a throw that'll put us up three points. 20 to 17. They might get one play. Weak kickoff here, fielded at the 22 yard line. And clock strike zero. That is the ball game, everybody. Austin pulls it off in the final seconds. And we defeat the Pittsburgh Steelers, remaining a one-loss football team. That was close. Pittsburgh really didn't challenge us much on offense. They're lucky they got the kickoff return for a touchdown. And our passing game certainly wasn't great, but big drive at the end to secure victory. Two interceptions for our defense. And filling in for Lloyd Spivey, it was Nick Blair rushing for 60 yards. And then obviously making big plays as a receiver. Five catches, 45 yards, and a touchdown. Nick Blair fills in for Lloyd Spivey and does a great job. Also very happy with Pryor on his four catches. And that one catch by Paul Williams was pretty sweet too. Wayne Coffey had a sack today. Another one. Picks for Easley and Scott Starks. That win has us in second place now. Four and one behind the undefeated Cowboys. And I want to see how our defense is ranking this year. Fourth in yardage, ninth in passing, second in rushing. Doesn't show points. Oh, it does. Average points against. We are second in the NFL, allowing 11.8 points per game. We haven't faced many good offenses, but still a lot to like here with the way the Austin Venom have started their season. And now I believe we're going to get Lloyd Spivey back for our next game. Has him as questionable. And I don't think I'll do the rehab again. So we'll just see if he's able to go. But I'm probably simulating that Ravens game, and I don't mind if he doesn't play it. The Ravens... Uh, Last time I checked, we're 0-4. John Spangler, just four touchdowns this year, five interceptions, but the running game has picked it up. Lloyd Spivey and Nick Blair, each at 4.3 yards a carry. Truman has the most catches on the team. Dexter, the most yards. Nobody on pace for a big receiving season. And all the touchdowns here. Blair has two, Truman one, and Dexter has one of them. It's a different team this year, everybody. And we are very, very close to being able to achieve our goals. So the season will continue next time here at the Austin Venom. I will see you all then. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And have a great day, everybody.